So I want to get started by talking about Canvas because Canvas can be hard to navigate. And so let me pull up our Canvas classroom and see if I can give you some um, hints for, I know this is not it, but this is, oh, come on. Um, that, okay, so here's our Canvas classroom. And the easiest way to navigate the Canvas classroom is to go to the week here, the weekly modules. You can access any previous modules by going to modules. You can access, access the discussion boards, quizzes, assignments over here. But if you access the discussions, quizzes, and assignments over here, you're going to miss the pages on Canvas, on the Canvas modules. And it's really important in a class like this one, I have a course reader, so in a way you have a textbook, but that just has a few readings. The bulk of our textbook is Canvas. This is the information that would be in a, um, this is the information that would be in a textbook if I were giving it to you. And so if you skip the pages on Canvas, you're skipping some of the instruction and the information that will help you. So um, I give you an overview, some reminders, I give you the objectives, what it is that we're working on, and then I give you Yes. Sorry to interrupt. I think your your screen. Are you showing us Canvas right now? I am not. Yeah, because it just shows Zoom right now. Okay. Thank you for interrupting. <laughs> Do you have this now? Do you Can see you Zoom see now? I still see the Zoom screen. Does anyone else see it? Ah, uh, then that's what everybody. Resume yeah, I see the Zoom. Okay, sure. now it seems to be good. Okay, well now I've talked about a bunch of stuff and it made absolutely no sense. So let's go back to the beginning. Um, here is module three. Thank you, Alyssa. I, I think you sent something in chat, but I can't see chat when I'm in share mode. And so at least I don't think I can. Um, these are all the pages and this is your instruction and it gives you an overview on the week and then you get to the bottom and then you'll see next and then you go to the next one so here were the readings um you should have read two of these today and you go to the next one here's the slide deck um, that i always post the video will be here later on if you want to listen to this again. Here's the quiz. Um, by the way, there is, this is the reading that I gave you last week that has lists of rhetorical strategies on it. Um, I gave you a quiz that you can take on this this evening. Um, so if you skip the pages, you're skipping important information and you may skip an assignment too. So I really recommend going the, through them page by page. I want to show you one other thing. This is next week's, these, these readings are readings about the type of writing you're supposed to do. It's like, here's an, here are articles about how to turn yourself into a character, just like Koenig did, just like McBride did, just like Johnson did or Harris did. Um, here's one by Paul Graham on the age of an essay. Um, all of these are articles about reading and I, I'm not assigning them all to you. I'm going to assign one to you. And that's what you're going to do. Um, this is a video on brainstorming and drafting. Um, but the discussion board, it will be up there. I haven't posted it yet. Um, the discussion board asks you to read one of those articles about how to write these essays and then summarize it 
and share the advice with the class. It's sort of like we're crowdsourcing the information. And as you go through the discussion boards, you'll be getting the best parts of all those articles. Um, and does that make sense? More or less. Uh, questions, I encourage you to go all the way um, through every single page. And yes, you get to write another rhetorical strategy paragraph this week. I know you're excited. The reflection direction, and then the wrap up. If you go through the whole thing, um, you won't miss things. You'll stay organized. And you can always, if you go, oh, I just want to read that one article again, you can always go um, to the module itself. By the way, you can collapse these modules by clicking here um, to make it easier. So questions about Canvas and navigating Canvas? Okay. I know it can be challenging and um, as you use it more and more, I think it'll make sense more and more. Um, so, back to this. By the way, um, pause me, stop me at any time. I already told you I can't see the chat um, when I'm in share mode. And so that ends up being problematic because I can't see um, any questions you have for me. But um, so just unmute yourself and come back in and you will be fine. And, and let me know if you have questions. So this is the agenda. I want to touch on the strategy paragraphs, talk about a few things. Um, and then we'll have some group work, not presentations. I took that back. Um, we'll do that next week. Um, but I also want to talk about um, getting feedback on your writing. Um, by the way, I know it was really discouraging to see my feedback on the rhetorical strategy paragraphs. The reason why I think it was discouraging is because you're all good writers. Um, I know that's true because I've been reading your writing. Um, I've been reading your stories on the discussion board. I've been reading um, your reflections. Um, I've been reading your feedback to other students. And I see your writing. You're writing clearly. You're writing with details. Um, some of your stories that you've been telling, they show me new things. I've been on the verge of tears, um, sometimes reading um, your quarantine stories really, um, sometimes they made me smile, sometimes they made me tear up. Um, so my point is you're good writers. Do not let my feedback on those strategy paragraphs say anything other than the fact that rhetorical analysis in college is not the same as it is in high school. I encounter this every time um, I have a new batch of first years and um, they remind me, you know, like that's not the way we did it in high school. Um, we didn't have to talk about the audience or I didn't have to tie a strategy to the argument, or um, you ask for so much analysis. Here's the thing, and I, and I put this in your syllabus, and I want to repeat it now. No matter how you saw yourself in high school, whether you saw yourself as a really good writer, or you saw yourself as not a very good writer, from my perspective, I want you to see yourselves as novices who have gained some area of expertise, um, but yet have more to learn in a, a new context, which is college writing. And rhetorical analysis is different. So you have more to learn in this new context. And here's where we are. And um, it can be really humbling to get feedback like I know I've given you. 
Um, but I give this feedback so you'll learn more. And I didn't allow it to hurt your grade. And that is the best I can do um, right here. Um, so I thought about reasons why um, reasons why we saw things differently. I think some of you may have not seen the pages on Canvas or you were overwhelmed with all the work that has to be done and you just go, I already know this stuff, so I'm not going to read all this. Um, I've done this before. I've got this. So it's important to read all the pages on Canvas. It's important to look at the strategy lists. Um, it's important to narrow your focus to this particular strategy. Um, it's important to think about the audience and to consider who is this particular audience. Um, I gave you some examples of me writing about strategies on E. Shelley Reed um, and writing about assumptions um, that E. Shelley Reed as her audience and I, so you could see how I did it. And so those things are available to you in, um, in module two. And you can just go back, click on modules, and you'll see the title that kind of tells you what that is about. Um, one thing that may be different than what you did in high school is for the purposes of this class, ethos, pathos, logos are not rhetorical strategies. Um, they are rhetorical appeals. Strategies are the things an author does in a text. And appeals are different because they are what the author is trying to, the response that the author is trying to evoke in the audience. So an appeal to pathos is an appeal to get an emotional response in an audience. An appeal to ethos is doing something that will cause the audience to trust the author. And so I look at these a little differently. And if you look at them differently also, you'll see that focusing on what an author does, the strategy, and these are types of strategies, focusing on what an author does allows you to talk about the audience response which is the appeal. So if you can talk about how an author describes something, for example, um, Koenig comes in and he, um, he immediately describes the camp in his very first paragraph, um, the camp at Standing Rock. And it seems very strange to him and then he describes the sound of basketball. And he's doing this for an audience of sports fans. And so the description allows them to see through his eyes the strangeness of the camp, the familiarity, the familiarity of sports, and how strange Koenig feels in that sports because it's very different context and yet it's the same so so why start that way is he needed to put his audience into that context and see it from his eyes as a sports fan they know koenig because um, back in 2016 he was still playing for wisconsin and he was a sought after player he was one of their key players and so sports fans who follow college basketball would know him. So these are strategies, comparing one thing to another, description, an analogy. Um, the narrative that James McBride tells in his opening, um, where he says, you know, like, this is my nightmare. I've, you know, like, my daughter has brought home a, um, uh, a hip hop a musician and um, announced that she's dating him and I'm horrified. And, and so, you know, like this, he starts with that because saying he's horrified helps him build um, ethos by showing, 
shared um, values and concerns that his audience of National Geographic readers might read. So, so he's building ethos, he's evoking pathos. Um, so that hypothetical scenario um, is a strategy. That list on the handout that I posted on Canvas, it's in week two and week three, names a lot of strategies and describes how I view them. It also gives you questions that you can ask when you're analyzing. Uh, questions about the difference between rhetorical strategies and rhetorical appeals. So this week, you were going to write another strategy paragraph on one of the readings you just read. Um, I gave you a long list of um, personal essays that touch on American values and um, write one strategy paragraph. And I want you to choose the strategy that the author opens with. Think of it as a hook to pull the audience in, to capture the audience's attention. And so I, I mentioned that McBride opens with a, um, a hypothetical narrative and um, you know, like it's his nightmare and he tells that story and that's how he opens. Um, I, I'm trying to think of some of the other readings I gave you and how they started. Um, in culinary seasons of my childhood, I know Harris opens with a description of why African Americans don't have a lot of history on the food they cook during the African diaspora. And you would talk about the strategy that is there. So it's what the author is doing, rhetorical strategy. So you'll identify the rhetorical strategy the author starts with at the beginning, provide the example, and show it how it functions as the strategy you name. And then you'll be analyzing how the primary audience will respond to that and analyze how this might make the primary audience more receptive to the overall argument. So that means you're gonna to have to know who the primary audience is. By the way, be sure to limit your quotes in your paragraph to fewer than four lines. Um, you can have more than one quote in the paragraph, but make sure you're doing deep analysis on specific words and phrases. Um, make sure that you're providing context for that quotation. Any questions on this assignment, which is due Saturday? So um, we should focus on more of like the quality of the strategy more than like, I guess, the quantity of strategies within the, um, like within the articles. Yeah, one paragraph, one strategy. Yeah. Okay. And I narrowed it down to the strategy that the author starts with. Um, and the reason why I did that is because you're going to be starting your own essays. And these are essays that are very, very different than the five paragraph essays or the traditional college or um, high school essays you've been writing. And so you're going to have to start with a creative strategy instead of you know, like what you might have normally done. And so developing awareness of strategies that could help you start your essay um, might actually be helpful for you in thinking about what you want to do in your own essay. Other questions about this? OK. Um, it. Uh, this is a slide that I didn't mean to include. I was going to adjust it and put Alyssa's page here. Um, now that we're doing the kind of writing that I'm evaluating, um, and I'm looking at it for specific things, the essay, the strategy paragraphs, it's probably a good time to think about getting feedback on your writing. Um, from Alyssa or from the Writing Center itself. Um, Alyssa, I'm gonna stop the share. Um, Alyssa is 
our RWS fellow, and she also works in the Writing Center. And so she can talk to you about why it's a good idea to get feedback, as well as um, how a fellow might differ from um, going to the Writing Center, advantages to each. Um, Alyssa, let me put it on speaker view. And can you talk about your experience as a tutor and a fellow? Because you've done both and you know that they are both really helpful for students. Yeah, so um, I guess to start off, I do believe that both um, having a fellow and having the ability to make appointments at the Writing Center is super, super helpful. Um, at the Writing Center, we work with um, general, general writing. So people even come in with, like earlier today, I had a psych paper and then I had a history paper. So it's really any type of writing. And we're really, um, you know, just gonna help you any way that you, um, that you want. Um, however, with the fellow program, um, like with me being in your guys' class and going, attending um, the lectures and doing a lot of the readings, um, I'll have a little bit more of a personal um, idea of like what Aaron is looking for and what's actually required of you guys. So um, I, uh, I did create this sign up sheet and I just put it in the chat. Um, I think it's on edit, so hopefully you guys can access it. So if you can, um, go ahead and click on that. Um, and for right now, I only have from September 9th to September 15th. Um, and I have a couple of availabilities um, based on my schedule um, up until, because I know you have that personal essay is due on September 16th. And I wrote at the bottom that I'm not available on the 16th. So if you need any um, help with this particular particular essay, um, do try to book an appointment with me earlier um, if you do need help. But I will be able to help. I know there's this is just the first draft, so you'll have um, you'll have more time to work on it and more times to meet with me. And I'll, I'll hopefully be using this document throughout the rest of the semester and just editing it basically week by week. Um, based on my schedule to try to accommodate you guys. Um, and if for some reason you can't meet any of these times, go ahead and shoot me a message on Canvas inbox or to my email that's all on this document. Um, but yeah, Erin, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe we can post this somewhere on Canvas too. Um, yeah, let's, let's do that. I'll pull it off the chat and post it on Canvas. Perfect. Um, as soon as I get off and I'll send it in an announcement and um, I'll put it on, um, I'll put the link on the homepage. Okay. Also. Okay. I think that that's a good idea. Yeah. And I did want to just mention, sorry, one last thing about this. Um, so I decided this year to do, um, give you guys the option of whether you want to have a Zoom chat with me or if you feel more comfortable, maybe giving me the access to your Google, Google Doc so I can add comments on it and we can communicate that way. Um, so whatever works for you, just make note of that. And I am asking that if you have the ability to, if you know how to, to create a link for Zoom when it's time for your appointment and then post that link in this same document so that if I'm meeting with a student at 3.30 and I'm meeting with you at four, I can quickly go into this document and make sure that I'm meeting with the crux student. Um, but yeah, and if I happen to miss it for some reason, I'll, I'll be checking it during all these times, but just, again, just message me. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I'll work for right now. We're all being super creative right now. It's like, how do we, how do we make this work for all of you? Um, yeah, uh, Alyssa uh, mentioned um, it's just the rough draft due on Wednesday. And I really strongly believe um, like E. Shelley Reed said that we don't know if what we say makes sense until somebody else reads it and gives us feedback. And the feedback might be something, because um, Alyssa is not going to just come to you and say, wow, that sucks. Um, definitely not, Alyssa. I, <laughs> I know. Um, what are the kinds of things that you work on with students, Alyssa? So it's really up to what you want to work on. So um, if you're really at the beginning stages and you're really unsure of 
maybe where to take it. You maybe you have like a, you know, an idea formulated in your mind, but you're struggling to put it on paper. We can talk through that and we can get started. And I can give you ideas of maybe a lot of times with students, I'll help them create like a little bit of an outline that then after our session, they can go in and fill out and um, really form their essay. Um, or sometimes it's more of like um, a general proofread at the end and just asking for any ways that um, maybe you could expand on a certain point or um, add analysis somewhere. And if that's so, then um, uh, we'll address that during the session. But yeah, it's basically anything that um, you feel that you need help on. Um, and I'll also, if I see something that's like, me maybe if you're wanting help on grammar, which is okay, I can help you with that. But I, um, I'm here more for like general ideas and like helping you um, really hit the prompt. Um, so if you do ask for help on grammar, I'll definitely address that. But if I do see that you're like missing a section of the prompt, I'll try to address that too. I want to emphasize that Alyssa is not your editor where you just go, can you go in and fix all my grammar? Because that's not what she's doing. So um, uh, the other thing is um, she's, Alyssa's really good. I've heard her in a lot of sessions in the writing center. I know her dedication to work. Um, she has experience as an RWS 200 student and she has an experience as a writer. She's also really experienced with the type of writing that we're doing right now, which is this creative nonfiction, which is storytelling. And, and I think that that's important to remember as you go forward with this. So Alyssa has set hours. The Writing Center will be able to help you um, with other hours that she's not available. She has a maximum of eight hours a week that she can work in this class. And so, um, is it eight, Alyssa? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so um, obviously we have a lot of people in the class and so the Writing Center will have different availability and, and I think that that'll be important as we move forward too. Let me um, go back to the PowerPoint. Alyssa, feel free to um, interrupt me at any point because um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Writing Center. Okay. Um, by the way, there is a module on Canvas. It's not called Writing Center module. It's called Getting Feedback. I'll show it to you in just a moment. Um, but the Writing Center is a free service offered to all SDSU students. Now, Alyssa will work with you on writing for this class, but like she said, she worked with a psych paper this morning. And you will have writing in other classes besides RWS. So if you have writing for a sociology class, a music appreciation class, uh, an anthropology or a history class, you can take that into the Writing Center and get the same kind of feedback from a tutor. Um, we work on scholarship essays, resumes, personal statements, any kind of writing, whether it's for the university or not. Um, all our tutors are students like Alyssa. They're upper level students with a variety of academic backgrounds. Um, we have their bios on our website. Um, by the way, there is a link to our website on Canvas um, under additional links. Um, the thing that Alyssa and all our tutors have in common is they've all been successful in writing at the university and they're prepared through professional development to read and respond to student writing. And they're always undergoing additional training. Um, we have two kinds of appointments. Alyssa described how she can meet with you live on Zoom or you can send her a link to your paper on Google Docs. We have the same thing in the Writing Center. Um, we have live half hour appointments that take place during Writing Center hours. And you and your tutor share a whiteboard, audio, video, chat, whatever works best for you. Um, and you and your tutor only work when you're present, 
but we also have the opportunity for asynchronous appointments and you submit a paper and we give feedback within 48 hours of your appointment day and time. Um, we're open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from nine in the morning till eight in the afternoon, eight in the afternoon, eight in the evening on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And on Thursdays, we close at five and Fridays, we close at two. Um, you meet with, just as you would meet live with Alyssa, you would meet live with a tutor. Um, they will work on any aspect of your writing at any stage of the writing process. Um, you can have up to three appointments a week, even two in a single day, they just can't be back to back. To set up a writing center online account, you can go to our website or you can go to sdsu.mywconline. Enter your email address, your at sdsu.edu email address, your name, information about yourself as a tutor. You'll go to a login page like this that will have the dates at the top, um, the tutor names, um, and then all the times that we're open in 30 minute increments. To make an appointment, you click on the white box and um, fill out what you wanna work on, click create appointment. And after you're done, it will turn bright yellow. To access the appointment, um, you log in again to that schedule and you'll look for your yellow appointment on the day. You click on that and then you can click on start or join online conversation and that will take you into the platform. So on Zoom, it's a little easier, but this works and it's a nice secure platform. Um, if you have any um, notes that are made to your document, you can copy paste those and access them at any time. So um, questions for me about the writing center or questions for Alyssa about what it is that you do. Okay, so we have about 15 minutes left and I'm going to divide you up into breakout rooms. And what I'd like for you to do, um, is talk about the texts that you read, the essays that you read, and the American values that you saw, as well as how the author um, built the arguments they made using those values, um, appealing to the audience's values. For example, in McBride, um, he, He's appealing to his audience's value of music and the audience, an audience that reads National Geographic values culture and um, probably values diversity, but also might be um, the American values of progress or time or hard work, they might have attitudes about those and dismiss hip hop artists because they think that they don't value the same kind of hard work they do. And of course, McBride is able to show, yes, they do. Yes, this is music. Yes, it is hard work. Yes, um, it's important to have equality. And so, um, go ahead and talk about that. Please note that the people that you meet with are going to be your peer reading group for this next personal essay. So it's random how I'm setting it up, but these are gonna be your people that are gonna be reading your personal essay, um, that are going to be giving you feedback, that you're gonna be brainstorming how we can organize our book, how we can divide it up, titles, those types of things. Okay, so talk with each other, meet each other, um, get to know each other. In 10 minutes, you will meet each other again. Okay, so let me break you up. 
um, into, um, I'm going to make groups of about four each. Um, three to four. And nope, I'm going to do four to five. Okay. Because I know Alyssa will get into this mix. Okay. And so there are going to be seven different rooms. I'm going to be taking note of who is in each room. And questions before I send you off? Okay. And you're released. Mine didn't pop up. <laughs> it didn't pop up? No. Oh, dear. Oh, wait. Let me try exiting the Zoom, maybe. Do you have a box that says join breakout room at the bottom? Oh. OK. <laughs> oh, she did. She did. OK, cool. I figured for this one, I should let them get to know each other. Yeah, I wish you'd gotten in a group of five, but am I in that's a group? Okay. Uh, Drake, Eric, Rebecca, Regine. So there's going to be one group of three. Oh no, really? Yeah, it's okay. So is this for like peer review? They're gonna be reviewing each other's papers? Yes. Okay. I want them to do this in groups so they get feedback from more than one person. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think peer reviews always help because then they can, they might even see something in someone else's paper that like makes them you know, they're like, oh, maybe I should have added something like this to my paper and whatnot. The other reason why I want to do it this way, um, I just wrote Corey as, as um, Rory, but that's, <laughs> the other reason why I wanted to do it this way is I want them to get to know each other right? in more of a personal context. Um, they feel really disconnected from each other right now and new breakout rooms every time um, make it harder for them, I think. So is there a way now that you can, like, write, so you wrote down everyone's names, right, who's in the groups? Is there, like, yes. a way to manually go in and make sure that they're always in the same group for the next? Uh, yes, there is. I don't know it right now, but there is. I know. Gosh, I wish there was a way. That, I'm sure there is. I, I can set it up, but I don't know how much work it is to manually set it up. Oops. Here we go. Um, what kind of American values did you see in the texts? Group one. What text did you have, did you discuss? And what American values did you see or what values in general? Um, we all kind of um, had the essays that we read were all like we focused on different ones, but individualism and in all of them, I think mostly was and hard work and like, yeah, <laughs> struggling to get my thoughts like verbalized. You're doing fine, Faith. You're doing but, fine. Because each of them all were different in their own way, so it's. But what was your favorite one? Um, the one that I liked the best, or not the best, liked it the best, but the one that I thought was like the most moving to me personally was "Unspeakable Conversations." Mm. That was the one I added right. At, that was the last one I added, and it was it was very very moving. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm glad I discovered it at the last minute. Um, 
Group two, was there one particular essay that you all talked about or um, what did you discuss? Litzy? Um, for us, I think there was like two or three of us that actually read the same one, uh, the How to Tame a Wild Tongue. Oh, yeah. And I really like that one because it shows how, like one of the American values that was talked in the article we read, it was like that Americans can't really control their emotions. But in this one, you can see that she actually did because she had to. She, they like told her like, oh, you have to learn how to adapt. And then she like referred to it how um, it was like getting your tongue um, cut off yeah. if you like for her to stop like speaking Spanish. Yeah. And yeah. Huh. That's one of my favorite essays. Um, I really enjoy that one. Um, group three. Well, we all kind of like read different ones also, but the ones I really, the one I really enjoyed was also the Tim Wild Tongue. And I think it really showed the like hyper patriotism that like the value that Allison found because she said that she was always like being, uh, like she was always motivated in order to accommodate to the American values, even though she really was a Chicano and there were so many languages and identities that she had, but she felt like she was always being somewhat like intimidated in order to um what's it called just like uh transition into more american and speaking that english tongue yeah thanks drake as you were talking drake i started thinking about how this push to conform to a certain way of being an american is really anti-individualism and in so some ways she's calling calling out those teachers who said you need to be this way and it's not okay to be other ways i'm not going to have time but you will be working with these people will do a little bit of work as a group on monday and you'll be working with each other for the next few weeks um i wanted to close out a couple of things um i will be posting a video about how to brainstorm your essay um and draft it and that'll be up this afternoon it's a short one i've already done the video it's 15 minutes and it's just brainstorming because you don't want to say something that's so expected and so straightforward that it doesn't you know, like allow surprise and engagement from your audience and for your stories. Um, the other thing is um, Alyssa um, talked about her availability. Um, Alyssa, do you want to talk about, you know, like how students can get, can meet with you if you're not available during your fellow office hours? Uh, yeah, so um, we had just talked about while you guys were in breakout rooms that, um, you you know how we said that you could book an appointment at the writing center um since i do work there i think 10 hours a week um if you see my name pop up you can also book an appointment with me during that time it would just be um so that way we would use like a different platform as well if that seems easier um but also don't feel like offended you don't have to choose me also if it like a different time or someone else works for you go ahead and do that um, okay, so um, let me send, um, um, I am going to close out today's meeting, but I will stay on here um, for a few more minutes if you have questions. Okay, so otherwise have a wonderful weekend, do all your work, I can't wait to read it, and um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jenny, did you have a question?
Yeah. Um. So were we gonna get extra credit for signing up at the right at the writing center? Yes. Yes. I meant to talk about that. I'll send out an announcement on Canvas. Um, right below the link for the cla Canvas classroom, there is a link to getting feedback. There's some information about the writing center, and there's a link for getting that feedback or getting the extra credit for signing up for an account at the writing center. Yeah, because I, I had sent you an email um, showing you that I signed up, but I don't think you opened it. I think it was last oh, Yeah, I don't remember getting that email. Was that today or was that another time? Yeah, it was another time. Okay, then I'll go ahead and check and give you feedback or give you the extra credit. Okay. Drake, did you have a question? Yeah, for the rhetorical analysis, like paragraph, do you want us to stick to strictly the rhetorical strategies or can we also use rhetorical appeals like ethos? Well, analysis? Um, when you're analyzing rhetorical strategies, you identify the strategy and you'll touch on rhetorical appeals in the analysis because the, the strategy is there to evoke some kind of audience response. So having a shocking story at the beginning may may appeal to pathos so it's what the author does to get the audience to feel scared or shocked or disgusted or horrified does that make sense Drake? okay yeah got it all right mm -hmm. thank you sure um let's see rebecca did you have questions for me yeah yeah it was actually kind of oh sorry you can go Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I actually like left for two minutes, but then I was back and then you were saying something about a video you uploaded, like that was 15 minutes long and I just didn't know what that was about. So, so, so Rebecca, that video is about how to brainstorm your paper. Um, okay. You're writing a very, this prompt is very specific because it asks you to ask a question about um, your values particularly the values that might be typically American. And I know you have, I mean, like how many countries did you live in, Rebecca, 18? Uh, no, I didn't live in 18 countries. I've, <laughs> I've been to 18 countries. I've lived in three countries. No, four now, yeah, four. So, so the way you write about Amer American values, yeah. um, is going to give a, a unique perspective, which is really valuable and gives you, um, it, it gives an interesting voice because your perspective is different. Um, so you might be um, that, okay, never mind. Um, I don't know where my brain went just all of a sudden, but the brainstorming how do you go about writing this that's what that video is okay like how do you get ideas for this so that they're not expected ideas so they're kind of surprising and engaging and that's what that video is for okay thank you okay also, sure just one last thing um i've already made an account on uh the writing center website like a year ago so does that still count for my extra credit like how do i prove that? um i have access to all those things okay so you're good okay thank you okay bye have a good day you too let's see oh yeah i had a question like kind of similar to drake's um so for the rhetorical um strategy and the appeals so uh -huh. could we mention the appeals or like do you recommend not doing that like do i mention like oh pathos like like it's showing pathos or like no so what i would really like that would be more detail oriented is like i like drake asked you know like i said start with the rhetorical strategy so the author um begins by describing the scene of the camps at Standing Rock. And then you would give examples of, you know, like what that was. And as I recall, I didn't understand. I mean, I knew where he was because that was in the title, but it made me really curious why he was there. And 
confused about why he was there and what he was doing and why he was going to do a basketball camp there. And so description led to pathos, but instead of saying, and that appeals to pathos, I identified the emotion. Emotion, okay. So okay. confusion, disoriented. So like, yeah. So like words, but like that relate to pathos, logos, or ethos, right? Yeah, and you can use the words ethos, pathos, and logos, but make sure that you're doing it in a way that shows that you're actually showing that it's evoking emotions and name the emotions okay. um, or that it's building ethos by, you know, like, because the author's knowledgeability or the author's identity makes them feel like he's trustworthy. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So it's a lot more specific. It's a lot more detailed than just saying, and this produces ethos. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Bye. Bye bye, Itsy. Let's see. Professor Aaron, bye bye. Yes. Have a good day. You too, Jenny. Take care. Thank you. you mm -hmm. too. Bye bye. Bye.